Celá je o sviniem karmúšku. O piať svinie. Šo kolchoz vybrá svoj, vín podberá je. Livestock is livestock. Just a moment, help. Give us a hand. Old pigs, hens that won't lay of this stupid calf, and this old fool feeds them all. Never mind, old woman. Big cities aren't so bad, you know, Grandpa. I really miss Kiev. Once, when I was there, I saw a play about three sisters who just couldn't wait to get to Moscow. What sisters? No, in a play. I always thought I'd really go. Now here I am, stuck in Pripyat. Well, thank God he sent you here to us. And when the baby comes, I'll be able to look after his for you. I know, Grandma. <coughs> You're smoking too much. What's that difference? It's springtime. See, the geese are flying north. I've been asked to give you a description of our work here at UCLA on the treatment of leukemia. My name is Robert Gale. I'm a physician, internist, hematologist, oncologist, and immunologist. Leukemia is a cancer of the bone marrow resulting in excess numbers of white blood cells. Note, remember to prepare simplified slides, the ones from the last conference are too damn technical. In a transplant, the leukemia patient's bone marrow, which is manufacturing leukemia blood cells, Okay, now this fellow is a smoker, and there seems to be a small nodule in the left lung field. Mm-hmm. I thought we should repeat the series just to make sure. Mm -hmm. I'll call the patient and let him know what we found and ask him to come back in again. No, don't do that. Tell him, um, tell him that we found something technically wrong with the scan and we're going to have to um, repeat it. I don't see why we should lie to the guy. Look, Dave, you can't reschedule the scan for at least a week. Why should this poor bastard walk around for all that time thinking he has lung cancer? But, but he may have lung cancer. Yes, he may. That's not the point. We can't do anything until we're certain. So let him have the week. Dr. Gassner, my patient is a 46-year-old man with advanced leukemia, and he needs fluderbine. Yes, I know that there are strict rules for releasing investigational drugs, but look, let's just talk quietly now. He meets nine out of ten of the criteria. Yes, he is older than the 45-year age limit, which is ridiculous because he was 45 three weeks ago. Uh, wait, wait a second. Are you just a second now? Are you telling me that this man should die because he's three weeks past some arbitrary limit? Well, you can be certain. I'll do everything I can to get this man the drug. No, I'm not trying to skirt anyone's authority. I'm trying to save his life. good time last night? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> you should have seen the last goal. Alyosha does the most incredible cross right into the penalty area and I swear Alec went up in the air three meters on the fly, <laughs> smack right into the corner of the net. <laughs> you should have come with us. I wasn't feeling rude. I know. Mind you, I've never heard of morning sickness at five in the afternoon. And I've never heard of a football match going on past midnight. We only had a few. Anyway, you were fast asleep when I got in. It's fine for you boys. You have a whole world of your own here in Pripyat. At least in Kiev, I had the theatre to go to with my friends from the Institute, or, or sometimes the ballet. But my job is here. I mean, you can't be a sergeant in the Chernobyl Fire Brigade and go to the ballet in Kiev every night, can you? Listen, 
What's going on? Is the test on or off? Who the hell knows? By two o'clock, we had the emergency reactor cooling turned off. Then the grid controller calls up from Kiev. He wants full power for eight hours longer. Is that what happened? Why? Run on power before the holidays. His wife had her hair dryer plugged in. Pay attention. That was grid control from Kiev. We don't need the output from number four anymore. We can go ahead with the test. Boris, what's reactor power now? 8.50. Reactor wall ready for test. All right. Let's go. We pick up the test where we left off. She loves you, don't forget. <laughs> I'm not sure she loves me. Mm -hmm. What was it? Uh, some silly bastard dropped his uh, cigarette butt in the wastebasket. Oh, big fire? No, Valerie just pissed on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, great game yesterday. Yeah, with a little help from my friends. Yeah, Alyosha? Yeah, that's the last girl. Yep. <laughs> OK. <coughs> mm, fine. Yeah? Ah, oh, she's bored. I should have come straight home last night. She's pregnant. What do you expect? Oh, you're the expert. Yep. Night's one. Coming tomorrow. <laughs> so, what are you going to do? After the shift tomorrow, I'm going to go out to that field and I'm going to pick her some flowers. <laughs> what? Mm. Yeah. I'm going to pick her some flowers, take them to her, and I'm going to put them right in her lap. The other, reactor power. Holding between 700, 710? No, it's dropping. Below 250 already. It's too damn low. I mean, there's no way we can run the test at this level. Have you got an instrument malfunction? No, here, look. It's confirmed. I don't know why it's reading so low. Control rods. Could be the regulator setting is off. Which one? Secondary. It was set. I ordered it around 1,200 megawatts. Well, let me check it out over there. Grisha, didn't I tell you to set it? I thought I did. It is set. Oh, Jesus. I was sure I... It was just before you asked me for the steam read. Obviously, it wasn't set. Well, we'll have to figure out something. Well, we just tell them the power dropped too low and the test is off. Oh, no, 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 no. If we stop now, it's a whole year before the next maintenance shut down. The whole test isn't that important. They'd never try anything like it normally. Why don't we just scrub the whole damn thing? We can't do that. They've ordered this test from division administration. They've already committed themselves to regional and Moscow. They're going to be very pissed off if we don't get it done. Look, it's not my responsibility, but if it was me... Are you giving me an argument, Chernoff? You're making trouble. All right. We've just filled up the power to the correct level and run the test. Let's just get it done. Pull the control rods. Vanya, what's your turbine reading? It's 130. Steam temperature? 276. I want a water level reading. 51. What have we got? It's up to 350. Well... That's still too low. The test won't mean a damn thing at that level. I'm not worried about that. We're covered. We're in the clear. We can argue about validity later. Igor, two additional water pumps on full. Yeah. I've got a drop in steam temperature. Steam. Up. Wait a minute. No, no, it's kicking all over. Water level is fluctuating. Up or down? Both? Come on, will you? It's moving both ways. No, no. It's going down. Down. Water level is dropping fast. There's an automatic shutdown warning. Override. Are you sure? We've done it before. Steam is stabilizing. Water level is holding. Good. Boris, are you ready? I still think we ought to just... I know. You just do your job. What about the other safety systems, the turbine cutoff? That only keys in when the turbines come to a dead stop. There's nothing in the test... Yeah, well, we better be on the safe side. We're going to cover ourselves on this one. 
Vanya, switch it off. All right. What's your reactor reading? Seven percent. Good. Good. We're in good shape now. Right. Let's have some steam readings. Start timing when it hits zero. Steam is 287. What's going on? Give me a steam reading. Steam 350 and rising. Water level is 40. No, 25. Make it mine now. Control rods back in. Here, AZ-5. to get up to the reactor roof as soon as possible. Right. Thank you. 
Shield has blown off the reactor. It's exposed. Send someone up for it. No, my that, brother. Look, one at a time. That's my brother. Come with me now. My brother. Radiation symptoms? What about thermal burns? Right there, yes. Yes, no. Come on, hurry! Bring another stretcher! Quick! Have a hell of the boat brigade! Now at least ten minutes away! I need another pumper for the other hose! Has anybody checked the cable room on the sixth level? Say again? Has anybody checked the cable room on the sixth level? Oh, for God's sake, get someone up there now! What is all this? I'm trying to explain what's happening. The important thing is to stay calm. We don't want any panic. For God's sake, the core is burning. We can contain the damage. Don't you understand? The fire on the roof is coming under control. Not the roof damage, it's the core. Do you understand? The reactor, the radioactive core, the graphite in the core is burning. I told you, comrade. All proper steps have been taken Will to control the Will you explain that it's the core? An uncontrolled nuclear all chain right, reaction. Comrade, all right. The reactor core could melt through its base into the pool below. A meltdown. A China syndrome. Oh. Look up there. Fission products, cesium, strontium ninety. Get back in the car. Your shoes. Work hard at your sums. Come and sit beside me here, okay? 
Hey, Major. Uh -huh. The fire on the roof. We beat the son of a bitch, right? Yeah. We beat it. Oh, good. Maybe we can get a couple of weeks extra holiday. Don't worry about it. A couple of weeks on the Black Sea. Nice little suntan. Sonny, you got all the time you need. Hey. Hey, medic. Where are we going? Don't worry about it. Then tell me not to worry about it. I asked you a question, you son of a bitch. Where are we going? You're flying to a hospital in Moscow. Bob, you're scheduled in OR at 8 o'clock. Yes, I know. Well, if you want to go running, you're going to have to get up at 6-ish. I know. I'm coming. Oh, thank God. Thank God. There's a potential bone marrow donor in the registry. Who's it for? Nancy Johnson. That little girl with leukemia. Where's the donor? Birmingham, England. Now, I've got to call John and arrange to fly the donor in. Honey, isn't that the family that's on welfare? Sweetie, look, who's going to be paying for this airline ticket, huh? And the living expenses? Well, first we'll get the donor in, and then we'll find someone to help us with the money. Maybe Peter Levinson. Yeah, wouldn't it be safer to find out if you have the money first? Safer for me, but not the little girl. There's no time. And at Dodger Stadium, Fernando Valenzuela went the distance and scattered six hits to hit the San Francisco Giants 3-2. In other news, a Reuters dispatch quotes confidential sources in Sweden reporting that monitors north of Stockholm have picked up a sudden increase in radioactivity. Weather studies of wind conditions indicate that the source of the radiation is within the Soviet Union. Swedish authorities refuse to speculate on whether this could be the result of secret nuclear weapons testing. I tried ringing the fire station, but I can't get through. Let me fix you some tea. There, see. He had a double shift and he forgot to call. He wouldn't ring. He has a key. Mrs. Marshenko? Yes. One moment. I'll be with you in a minute. 36 to 40 upstairs. Quickly. What do you want? I'm from the local executive committee. How many? How many what? People living in the apartment. Three. My husband, his brother and hey, my... what is this all about? Who are you? Dania Ulanova. I live across the hall. Oh, I haven't got to you yet. Elena Marshenko, right? Any children? No, not... Occupation of husband. He's in the fire brigade. Look, what is this? What's happened? It's been over 24 I'm hours since... I'm not supposed to waste time in conversation. Oh, look, don't be so rude. Occupants must be ready in one hour by two o'clock this afternoon with one suitcase. What is she talking the about? Dogs, cats or canaries are to be taken. All persons must remain indoors. The buses will come to the front door of the apartment block. Please, please tell me, what is it? There's been an event. A what? An event at the nuclear plant. Don't worry, the evacuation will only be for a few days. Where are you going? I have to find him. He may be hurt. You have what the girl said. Helena, it will be all right. Why didn't they tell us? It's been a day and a half. Now, leave it where it is. 
I'm coming. Excuse me. Excuse me. What is it? My husband is Valery Marshenko, a sergeant in the fire brigade. It's been two days. I have a right to know Lady, what... Lady, please. But I have to know where he is. How am I going to find him? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Do you know where these buses are going? Oh no! One suitcase! Only one suitcase! My grandparents are in a village near here. How will they know where to find them? I don't know. They settle all that at the distribution point, okay? has a half-life of 30 years and there's other stuff even worse like plutonium 10,000 years my mother told me you're pregnant how long three months three months what are you going to do about it
I know what I'm doing. You don't, well, you yes, know I what do. you're doing. I know you do, but you don't, you can't do it. You stop talking. Uh, Come on, Miss uh, Do as I said. They can shout as much as they like. This is my home, and I'm staying in it. We have just received confirmation that an accident has taken place at the Chernobyl power station. Measures are being taken to minimize the consequences. Bob, of the are you watching Those this? Affected are being yes, I am. This brief announcement on the regularly scheduled Moscow news program Vremia has stimulated worldwide speculation. West German and Swedish authorities are reporting the Russians have circumvented normal diplomatic channels to ask for advice on how to put out a radioactive fire. It seems clear that in Chernobyl, some 70 miles from the major Ukrainian city of Kiev, a nuclear reactor may be burning out of control. In this morning's edition, the New York Post has headlined a death toll already exceeding 2,000. I'll be back with the local news in just a moment. Dr. Borden, please. Robert Gale calling from Los Angeles. Mort, hi. Did you see the news this morning? The Soviet nuclear reactor? Mort, I think we should make an offer of assistance from the bone marrow transplant registry. No, just what I heard on the news this morning. The State Department made an official offer. The Soviets turned it down, right? Still, Mort, we have resources they're going to need. And if there's anything like the casualties reported, these people are in deep trouble. I know, I agree. Sure, they're not going to accept the official offer, but I... I think I know another way, Mort. I know someone who can get us directly to the Kremlin. No, see the... no, the lighting is all wrong on the Renoir. You can't see the damn thing. Don't worry, uh, I'll make a note of it and we'll take care of it. Yes, I didn't arrange for the loan of 33 impressionists from the Hermitage and the Pushkin to have them lit by amateurs. Please, Doctor, don't worry. Everything will be fine. The Renoir's mine, you know. I got it in 1923 or 24. Russians owed me about $100,000. <laughs> Lennon said they didn't have any cash, so I said that I'd settle for whatever furniture and paintings were in the old mansion they had me in. Excuse me. There's an urgent telephone call for Dr. Hammer from Los Angeles. Refer it to my office at Occidental Petroleum. Everything is quite urgent. It's from a Dr. Robert Gale. Who? Dr. Gale, he says he traveled with you on your plane to Israel and he met you when he was on the president's panel on cancer. Oh, of course I remember Gale. The fellow wears clocks. As you know, Dr. Hammer, the effects of, of a nuclear accident are very similar to what occurs when we give high-dose radiation to a person with leukemia. Yes, yes, I see. Uh, but do you think they'll need outside resources? And Bob, how many American medical people do you think they'll need? What? I can't hear, I can't hear. you have to speak a little louder. No, 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 absolutely not. Forget flying victims to hospitals in Europe. I've dealt with the Soviets since 1921. Lenin, Stalin, Khrushchev, Brezhnev. After that, they won't allow it. Tell me if I'm being naive, but isn't it possible for you to just pick up a phone and make this whole thing work? I won't do anything that runs against government policy, but I'm meeting four senators from the House Foreign Relations Committee this afternoon. I'll ask. I'll let you know. Environmental experts predicted that the radioactive air mass from Chernobyl would drift across Siberia and into Japan during the first week of May. Scientists believe the invisible radioactive cloud will continue on across the Pacific. If that movement continues in that direction uh, in several days, that air mass would move uh, to the United States. Thomas heads a special task force which has been meeting daily to monitor the aftermath of the Chernobyl accident. After hearing the news from Japan, the group determined that the radioactive air mass could reach North America America as early as Tuesday. The exact time and place depend on wind speed and direction. However, weathermen believe that parts of Canada, Alaska, and the Pacific Northwest would be affected first. Copy to Dr. Robert Gale, Los Angeles. To General Secretary Mikhail Sergei Gorbachev, courtesy of the Soviet Embassy, Washington, and Minister Anatoly Dobrynin. Dear Mr. Secretary General, I was saddened to hear of the accident at the Chernobyl power plant near Kiev. As you know, one of the possible consequences of this kind of exposure can be irreversible damage to the blood and bone marrow, which results in death some two weeks after exposure. Dr. Robert Peter Gale, whose credentials I enclose, is prepared to come immediately to the Soviet Union to meet with Soviet nuclear scientists and hematologists to decide on the optimal course of action with the hope of saving the lives of those at risk. 
I will bear all the costs for his efforts. Victor, it's Victor Vasilich. I'd like to go directly to the hospital, Victor. No, no, no. It was decided, as you'd be quite tired, need the rest. I slept on the plan. You'll go to the hospital tomorrow. Plenty of time. I prefer to go this afternoon. In any case, one of the doctors is meeting you for breakfast tomorrow. Andrei of Yuri, a nice chap, you'll like him. You're with the Ministry of Health, Victor? Yeah. I spent a number of years as medical attache at the embassy in Washington. So I expect we'll get along famously. Originally, I was a psychiatrist. with the head. Victor, yeah. since we get checked in, I want to call the hospital. You have to help me. No, 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 no. You should rest. Victor, I don't speak the language. You have to help me. Don't worry. Can you hear me, Dr. Hammer? No, lovely suites on the second floor. Very nice art. Charming snow scene. 20th century Russian, I'm sure. Uh, breakfast tomorrow, Dr. Yuri Andreev. Uh, he's a um, hematologist at Hospital 6, coming by to take me to the hospital. <sighs> no. Doc Dr. Hammer, the New York Post is wrong. There's uh, absolutely no evidence, so far as I can gather, of mass graves of 2,000 dead. Apparently, there are four dead so far and 30 cases at uh, Hospital 6 transferred from Kiev. So I will tell them. No, no, never tell them anything. They're all sensitive. Try to gain their trust. Remember, in American medicine, we're used to competitive maneuver and grantsmanship. You find that Moscow is a long way from Southern California. I have English at the university, but back slow. No, no, I understand you perfectly, Dr. Andreev. We are glad you're come, but understand we have full range of treatments for, for, for uh, burns, for radiation, uh, all trauma in progress already. Of course. Uh, many doctors from Moscow and, and also from, from other medical uh, research centers also come. I understand. Это недоразумение. Это недоразумение. Посмотрите внимательнее. Да только что вам звонили из Министерства здравоохранения. Там The woman got in the gate. She won't let us pass because our license number isn't on her list. I'll do something. Да я вас пропущу. А сейчас что же мне делать? Пожалуйста. Послушайте. Я вам говорю. Я не вам. Успокойтесь. Ничего не успокаивайте. Я давно уже спокойно. Вы знаете, кого я не знаю, кого вы приписываете. Доктор не знаю. личный, доктор что? президента Рейгана. Поймите, а вы не пускаете. Ну? Что, правда, что ли? Ну, правда, конечно. Можете сами убедиться, посмотреть. Ну, извините. Пожалуйста. Алексей, давай! Не забудьте на контроле. What did you tell her, Victor? I told her you were a very important American doctor and a personal physician of President Ronald Reagan. <laughs> When the uh, first patient came from Chernobyl, it was all uh, uh, radioactive dust. Uh, uh, blood uh, sample, urine sample, uh, made uh, contaminate all laboratory equipment. Uh, so now, uh, check all person uh, before entry. Uh, Galina Vana at uh, Dr. Gale at Varic Vasilichev. <coughs> Добро пожаловать в шестую больницу. Welcome to hospital number six. 
Dr. Petrova. Uh, thank you. I don't need interpreter. Dr. Petrova, we'd just like to be helpful if we can, so... The sterile bubbles are on the next floor. Uh, of course, you understand, Dr. Gay. We couldn't wait for foreign experts. Treatment is underway for all patients in many modalities. Of course. In your specialty as well, we have done already three bone marrow transplants and three fetal liver transplants. Let's go to visit. This way, please. You understand, infection is the greatest danger for these radiation victims. Yes, we have the same problem with our patients after a transplant. We've had good results with some new antibiotics. Perhaps we can discuss these. Ultrasound in water bath. You have this in Los Angeles? No. This boy is from the fire brigade. He was on the roof of the reactor. He has severe thermal burns as well as radiation burns. There is also lung damage from inhaling radioactive gases. On the chest, when he was fighting the fire, he was hot, so he pulled open his shirt. See, the red spots, beta burns. They're not so common. I'm not sure I would be able to precisely identify the beta burns among the other things going on. I would. I have seen many already. Lubajan. Kaktila. Sevonia Utro. Хорошо, хорошо. Fine, fine. Работы нет больше. No more vomiting. Alyosha. Это специалист. Из Америки. Специалист. Из самой Америки. Должно быть, я важная персона. Правда? That must be pretty important, right? Доброе утро, доктор. Good morning, doctor. Доброе, доброе. Доброе утро. Может быть, он а, может принести мне какие-нибудь записи? Ну, американская музыка. Элвис, Долли Партон. I'll try. Постараюсь. Постараюсь. Скоро поправите. He seems in good spirits. It is denial. Only a few days ago he was active, strong, healthy. He cannot understand he will get sicker. There is nothing we can do to save him. Perhaps we... If you will excuse me, Dr. Gill, I have administrative duties. Dr. Andreev will continue with you on rounds. Yeah, so sure. Uh, Dr. Gail, uh, I think uh, perhaps you may be interested to see him. This is uh, Mashenko the fireman. He has typical gamma radiation damage. Uh, may I ask a question? Of course. So we can talk about it. Mr. Mashenko, when you were on the roof fighting the fire, did you know what was happening? That this was not just a fire? I saw a burning reactor core. But you stayed on the roof. Why? It was my job. I'm a fireman. Доктор, подождите. Excuse me, please, for one moment. Вы слышали, я отмею за минуту? Нет, еще. This is the uh, first time we have so many radiation victims, and uh, the symptoms are very different one from the other. Is Mashenko a candidate for a transplant? Uh, we think transplant is a good idea, but the uh, problem is tissue typing for donor. Mm -hmm. The ideal is uh, a brother or yes. sister, uh, but he has only one brother and he is here. He's also radiation victim, also a candidate for transplant. One problem is the need to do HLA typing quickly. Another is the analyzing of blood counts. You do it by hand. Uh, typing is accurate and reliable. But slow. It should be possible to fly in an automated blood cell counter, which can do all this work very, very rapidly. Also, I, I'd like to propose that we send for three more specialists. Who? 
First, uh, Paul Tarasaki, the world Paul expert in HLA type. Second, my colleague at UCLA, Dick Champlin, Champlin, very, very experienced in transplants. And the third? Uh, Peter Klassen. He's developed a technique to prevent graft-versus-host disease, but there may be a little problem with Klassen. He's from South Africa. You have no diplomatic relations with South Africa. Maybe let's not hurry about this thing. Maybe we wait a little bit. We have no time. Andreev, who do we know at the Foreign Office? Popov, Marsky. Send for your two colleagues, Doctor. The South African may take a little time. Please, go to the hotel and wait for a moment. I'll get you back south and send the truck over to the hospital with the rest. Uh, Victor, there are 21 boxes of medical equipment and supplies in there. Yeah. 21. Don't let anyone touch them until we... Right, go. right. Not to worry. I'll follow you. As they say, welcome to Moscow. Yes. <laughs> Where's the bag? Hey, well, not in there. Big help, Dave. What's, what about the rest of Europe? What's happening? Well, the radioactive plume has shifted. It went uh, west through Germany, Poland, and France. Turns south into Italy. And there's embargoes on vegetables, milk, meat all over Central Europe. They slaughtered thousands of reindeer in Lapland. And there's conflicting news reports about what's going on here in Russia. Uh, how many transplant candidates? Well, it's hard to say. We're getting people transferred from Kiev all the time. But I would say perhaps uh, 20 to 40. What about medical standards? We're going to have to be flexible. Technology is spotty, but insight and skill is very impressive. You're going to meet Petrova somewhere, somehow. She's had quite a lot of experience with radiation. What do you think, uh, accidents with nuclear weapons? Well, why not? We probably had plenty that Washington covered up. This is the blood analyzer. It's a machine to be provided a brazes crovy. Blood sample. A brazes crovy into the machine, F machino. start the program. Нажимать на кнопку, чтобы начинать машину. Скажите, пожалуйста, сколько образцов вы можете обработать за один час? She wants to know how many blood samples you can process within an hour. Uh, more than 500. Более 500. Невероятно, вы только шесть. She says she's very surprised because they can only do six. Dr. You will excuse my English. I am under considerable sedition. Dr. Vatisenko, they tell me that you were one of the first to respond to the accident. And I'm afraid I stayed there too long, close to the reactor. There is radiation of more than 500 rods. I have classic symptoms of severe radiation sickness, herpes, virus, blisters, Gums infected with candida, skin peeling away, and bloody diarrhea. I'm on very high level morphine, but the pain will, of course, increase. Your speciality is bone marrow transplant. Yes, it is. I'm afraid I'm not candidate for transplant. I will die. With your permission, doctor, I have a question for you. Yes, of course. In United States of America, are there people who wonder if reliance on nuclear power is reasonable? Yes, of course. There are such questions in America. Good. Then it is possible maybe it will all mean something. There is a no longer risk of contamination to me, doctor, it would be good to see your face. Of course. It's good to meet you, doctor. Likewise.
Hello, Anna. Hello, Nina. Hello, Anna. <laughs> oh, a beautiful pink dress. Hello, Lena. I still can't get through to evacuation headquarters. Did you go back to the clinic? Of course. What did they say? Nothing. A line around the block, and when I got there, they gave me an appointment for two weeks' time. <laughs> no one wanted to get near me. They were scared as soon as I said I'd been in Chernobyl. What? What if there's something wrong with the baby? I mean, no one will tell me anything. Leila, Kiev is going crazy. Official announcement, don't buy milk, meat, fresh vegetables. So what does the grocer try and sell me? Fresh vegetables. I said to him, I've got two kids, a pregnant woman from Pripyat. I want tin food only. You know those people downstairs with the shortwave radio? Oh, yes, yes, Sonia and her husband. They heard a Western broadcast. It said there was fallout everywhere. Do you want to hear rumours? There's a man on Gonshoff Street. He's a bootlegger. He's telling everybody it's a scientific fact that if you drink alcohol, you pee out the radioactivity. And I'm telling you, he's got plenty of customers. Don't worry, I'll get it. Hello, Labatoa? Yes. Yes, yes, she's here. Come on, Lena. Hello? Yes, speaking. Sergeant Valery Marshenko, 8th Fire Brigade. Hospital number six. In Kiev? Pardon? No, no, I understand. Thank you, thank you. He's in Moscow. Attention, Anywhere will do. Very broad spectrum. We, we know of this uh, in Soviet Union, but very, very hard to get hold of. And very difficult. Oh, it's proud of us. Hey, hey. I'm up against it all the time. All Peter, quiet! That's it! Dr. Yuri Andreev. This is Dr. Peter Klassen. Dr. Klassen, it's a uh, very great honor to meet with you. I look forward very much to your technical assistance. How the hell am I supposed to separate blood cells without a uh, centrifuge? Да есть же центрифуга, да? Ну на четвертом этаже. Я же ему показал, пусть идет туда. There is a centrifuge right on the fourth floor. It's an antique, man. My mother couldn't make chicken soup with it. Есть же новая центрифуга на шестом этаже. Пусть идет туда. There is the new one. Right on the sixth floor. All right, okay. sixth floor. I'm set up on the fourth floor. You can't play tubes up and down two floors and still maintain sterile conditions. The centrifuge on the sixth floor must be moved to Dr. Klassen's lab on the fourth floor. The door is too narrow. How did the centrifuge get into the room? Initially. Ну как как нормально. Поставили центрифугу, потом это стены, потом крышу, порядок, работает. There was a machine, and then the walls were built round. Look, these guys are listening to every damn word I'm Peter, saying. Look, Peter. I can tell you, I'm absolutely certain that that hotel room is bugged. They have difficulty enough delivering room service to the right place. Think about Bob, it. Bob, all I'm Peter. telling you is that if I don't get my centrifuge, I'm out I'm of here, man. I'm look, down. I've got a hell of a lot of work that I could probably be doing right now in case I'm getting any better. Let's go, Papa. Молодцы. Давай, 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 я сюда. Давай, давай, концу, концу, концу. Давай, ребят, вот так. Ну давай, девоньки, быстренько прибрали. Ну что, добился своего? Вот тебе твоя центрифуга, вот тебе твой четвертый этаж. Все. Давай, пошел я. 
Fourth floor. Let's go. At a farmer's cooperative in Roysdorf, just outside the capital of Bonn, crates of parsley, radishes, and lettuce don't go to market. They go to the dump. They have been banned from sale. West Germans are worried that even the fresh produce that is allowed in their markets today was rinsed with radioactive rain in the fields two weeks ago. You are American doctor, specialist. Yes, I am. You know my husband, Valery Marchenko. Oh, yes, I do, indeed. How is he? He is better? Well, it's quite serious, but we're doing the very best we can for him. I don't know exactly when he'll be able to come back. Подожди, секунду. Она должна пойти расписаться в журнале. Нет, она именно сейчас должна пойти и расписаться. Нет, сейчас. Она должна вернуться и расписаться в журнале. She has to register. Well, you tell this woman that Mrs. Mishenko's husband is a patient of ours, and she must be given proper care. Ну и к ней нужно как-то проявить какое-то внимание. Будьте добры. Она распишется, потом пройдет. She has to be registered. It's best you go with her. Mrs. Mashenko, we're doing the very best we can for your husband. You must try not to worry. Thank you, sir. Thank you, doctor. You understand, Mrs. Mashenko. You must stay outside the plastic. Only a short visit. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm all right. What about the morning sickness? It's gone. I bought you some chocolate. I'm in Kiev now. They moved everyone out from around the plant for 30 kilometers. I don't know where Grandma and Grandpa are, but I'm sure they're okay. There are all kinds of rumors in Kiev. It, it's crazy. They say all the children will be moved early to summer camp. Did you see uh, Alec there? No. Say hello. Football club. They asked after you. They rang me in Kiev. Yeah? Did they play the return match with Homel? I don't think so. One of them said they had to wait until you got back. <laughs> I can't remember his name. I think he said he was outside left. Yeah. Volodya. <laughs> Come back and visit you again soon. Hey, don't forget to wash my football kit. I met the American doctor. If he came all this way, he must be very special. I'm sure he can help us. The Americans are very advanced. Sorry, but it's time to go. Everything will be all right. I love you. Bye. From the information on the blood count prepared by our foreign colleagues, we feel that both your husband and his brother should have the bone marrow transplant, even though there is no one in the family to be the donor. Is there a question? Well, in a procedure like this, there is a certain possibility of failure. There is a risk, yes. I'd like to ask the American doctor, is that allowed? Yes. 
there are other complications. Burns from the steam, breathing in radioactive particles, and we would have to use an imperfectly matched donor. Shouldn't you explain this in Russian? No, no, no. I understand. Uh, doctor, what would you advise? I agree with Dr. Andreev. The best chance is to transplant. Doctor, listen. My wife. Yes, she'll be here in regular visiting hours. No, 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 she's expecting. Do you understand? I want to know, is it all right for her to come here to the hospital? You don't have to concern yourself about that. Don't bullshit me. I want to know, could the goddamn radiation come out of me and hurt the baby? We monitor you very carefully. We'll look out for the baby, I promise you. Listen, if God meant strawberries to be poisoned, would he have made them this beautiful? <sighs> Look, ripe, sweet, juicy. On the other hand, sometimes God is a little careless. <sighs> It is with a sense of hopelessness that Laplanders this year are herding what for centuries have been their main source of income towards the autumn cull. For of the first 1,000 reindeer slaughtered here in northern Sweden, 970 were found to be heavily contaminated with radioactivity as a direct result of fallout from Chernobyl. We're so damn proud of the things we brought in. We're dazzling the Soviets with the latest drugs and technology, but we keep losing people. You have to expect that, Bob. You're not God. These patients are at very high risk. There's just no precedent for the kinds of problems we're facing every day. You're giving them a chance, Bob. That's all you can do. Come on, I'll race you to the hotel. Dr. Gale, okay. excuse me, Dr. Gale, may I have a word? I'm George Castle, I'm with the Observer, London. Oh, I, 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 I'm sure you understand, I if can't If I could have a few words, in just a moment. I'm sorry, George, I, ha I have nothing to say. Uh, look, if you don't speak to the press, you open the door for the worst kind of rumours. Have you been able to get anything from the official sources? Oh, don't play naive, Doctor. You know what you get out of official sources. Sweet bugger all. How many deaths have there been? 
This yeah. reactor's still ducting up radioactive poison. Where's understand. Understand. the fallout going? I'm and what about the long term effects? The Soviet government. Uh, cancer. Birth so I, I can't effects. afford to violate. Well, you can't afford not to. I mean, That's if you right. people keep refusing interviews, do you know what will happen? We, the press, will come to the reasonable conclusion that you, Dr. Gale, okay. are conspiring with the Soviets to cover up the entire incident. That's impossible. Out of the question and head. Why? A news conference with questions shouted out of the cough. Look, it's going to happen anyway. I've been ambushed three or four times at the hotel by Western reporters. And so is everybody else. And it's embarrassing for us. It's embarrassing for your government. Too. Answering questions without an agreed prepared line? It's just telling the truth. Yeah, but, but Dr. Gale, consider. What if you, quite inadvertently, say things that the Soviet government hasn't announced or admitted? What about this new policy? that Gorbachev has presented. Glasnost. What is the English word for it? Openness. Openness. Yeah, but... Victor, but... look. The radioactive fallout couldn't be stopped at the border and neither can anything else. Tarasaki, Champlin, Klassen, they're going to be leaving soon. As soon as they get to the Frankfurt airport, the Western reporters will be all over them. It'll happen anyway. Now, wouldn't it be better if the Soviet government scheduled their own press conference in Moscow and took credit for it? Hair loss in the nation. Looks bad. But with blood transfusions, antibiotic, and antiviral agents, I'd say Major Shushenko has a very good chance of survival. Very good. Uh, uh, so, would it uh, harass you? I hope. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. What is it? They call from the hotel for you. My wife? No, no, no. Dr. Armand Hammer. He's in Moscow. Well, well, Bob. Bob, how are you? Oh. How's it going? Huh? Well, the team's in place. Tarasaki and Klassen working hard. Yes, I know. I have to pay the bills. <laughs> What's well, the result? We'll probably wind up uh, performing about a dozen transplants, but we're in an unknown area. And uh, Oh, look, I think I'll go over there to the hospital and check up on that say, myself I was going to say, I think you should today. come see what yeah. we're up against. Dr. Right, Hammer. Yeah. Well, well, what is it? Go ahead. A call transferred from Oxley headquarters. The Minister of Health on your request to visit hospital number six. Oh, yes. Well, tell them that uh, I have to go over and check the exhibit first, and it won't be before two o'clock. There seems to be a problem. They have denied your request. They explained it was on humanitarian grounds, a concern for your health, because of, they said, uh, your advanced age. Get the damn fools on the phone! Dr. Hammer, uh, perhaps if Tell we... them I am a doctor! that I first came over here in 1922 to fight a typhus epidemic. I've been working on this project for weeks and I have been paying for every damn thing that's come into this country. If they don't let me go into hospital number six after all I've done for them, I'm going to stand in front of the hospital until they do let me in. Hello? Ministerstvo Zdravotkhanenia. You have to Which handle them that way, you know. Old bureaucratic Minister. habits are He's bred in the bone here. <laughs> Take your that press conference was. proposal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, talking to Victor Vesocha? You heard about that? Yes. There are very interesting winds blowing through the inner circles in the Kremlin. There's a uh, still a seesaw battle going on for control. Gorbachev and the hardliners. Now, if this chap is half as clever as I think he is, he won't follow the traditional Kremlin habit of covering up. No, no, no. He'll use the necessity of this situation to start opening up. Now, he's uh, speaking on TV tonight, and they tell me there will be a press conference in the next couple of days. The Soviet Union has released a tape of the area around Chernobyl. The newscaster claims that the pictures prove that the damage was not as extensive as Western news organizations have said. This tape, which still leaves grave doubts as to the threat Chernobyl poses to humanity and the environment, was released after Mr. Gorbachev's speech last night. Did you hear him last evening? Yes, yes, I heard him. He left something out of Comrade Gorbachev. He was very careful to say nothing about use of nuclear power. No, he said nothing. Hmm? Nothing about effect of radiation escape from reactor 4 on men, women and children all over Europe and for many years. How many more cases of cancer, leukemia, defects of birth 
and the land. They will say the land is safe, but they will lie. The poison circle will spread. Well, it's hard to determine those statistics. Dr. Gill, it has occurred to me that this is a final warning. Dr. Gale, Mary Cloud, Daily Mail, London. May I thank you for taking time off from your work to give us much needed information. After everything you've seen here in Moscow, what do you think are the lessons the world could learn from this catastrophe at Chernobyl? Well, Mary, um, probably I'll regret what I'm going to say, but I, I think we have to view what's happened these past few weeks in a broader context. We've been dealing with a relatively small accident. And even with international cooperation, our ability to respond and care for the wounded has been limited. Any response to the intentional use of nuclear weapons will be inadequate. People who believe meaningful medical assistance is possible for the victims of nuclear war are mistaken, and this must never be forgotten. For mankind, Chernobyl should be a warning. Thank you. Patricia Anderson, Washington. Dr. Gale, isn't this accident worse than Hiroshima and Nagasaki put together and a classic example of the Soviet Union's total disregard for human life? You know, I, I feel it's inappropriate for me that, to... Uh, look, uh, uh, we'll answer these questions later. I just want to tell you all that I have just received a call from Mr. Besmertnik of the Foreign Secretariat advising me that Mr. Gorbachev would like to see Dr. Gale and me later today in the Kremlin. Mr. Gavrinin will be calling to make arrangements. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to see this, Dr. Hammer and Dr. Gale. From a lady in New York. She writes she's not as rich as Dr. Hammer, but she sends five dollars. And from another American lady, ten dollars. Apparently she's richer than the first lady. You see... People all over the world are concerned with our situation. How is it that your government is acting so irresponsibly? It takes pleasure now, tragedy. Your United Press International. 2,000 people dead at Chernobyl. Your New York Post. Mr. Secretary, it is unfortunate that these articles appear. As you know, in our country, the press is free to print anything they like. For better or for worse, the government does not control it. But Mr. George Schultz, your Secretary of State and your President Reagan, underestimating casualties. I tell you, this mountain of blood is designed to divert attention from war like American actions in the Prussian Gulf and Gulf of Sidra. Mr. General Secretary, I don't think that any American would take pleasure in the misfortune of your people, but if there had been reliable, full reports... You know, your president is putting the world further at risk. Your Star Wars. Oh, what would have happened if Chernobyl had been in space? If you put your strategic defense initiative into space, we'll do likewise. We'll have no choice. 
кто-то скажет это вашему правительству. Perhaps someone will tell this to your government. Yes, perhaps someone will, Mr. Secretary General. Возможно, кто-то и скажет, господин секретарь. Видите ли, мы из-за атомной аварии. No, because of a nuclear accident. Here we are, you and Dr. Gale and I. Можем ли мы? But there are more important questions. Can we use this feeling between us now to answer them? И это кто-то скажет вашему правительству. Someone must tell that to your government. Premier Gorbachev, there have been two great desires in my life. One, a cure for cancer. The other, world peace. You are the most capable and realistic Soviet leader since Lenin, and the one most likely to achieve it. I think that, I hope, you and Mr. Ray will honor the dead of Chernobyl by coming to such an agreement. I am 88 years old and uh, don't have much time left. I am a young man. I can wait longer for peace. So, Bob, did you have a chance for uh, three weeks to rest in Los Angeles sunshine? Not quite. Had a lot of catching up to do with my patients at UCLA. And how are they? Well, we have about 50% success rate with the transplants. I would, uh, I would be happy to settle for that. Are there more deaths? Three and uh, five or six are on the edge. What about the non-transplants? What about Major... Shashenko, he does well, yes. He will... Uh, he will go home to Kiev in maybe two weeks. And the brothers, how are they doing with their transplants? Uh, the football player, good. Good. He will survive to play center forward. Good. And the older brother, Valeri? No. Uh, yesterday. And uh, to our American colleagues, our respect, uh, our admiration, and our gratitude. Друзья, friends, for colleagues, and happiness. Thank you so much. And now, to celebrate our friendship and our collaboration, I brought for each of you a truly я привез каждому из вас American breakthrough in technical and scientific equipment. Научное оборудование. Я же работаю постоянно. Я хочу такую. Dr. Gill, I am preparing now the preliminary report for the International Atomic Energy Conference in Vienna. It's two months away, isn't it? Yes. It has been decided somewhere up on Mount Everest in Politburo that a complete, open and full report should be made to the scientific community on Chernobyl. Oh, that's very good news. Complete open and full, is in fashion now. I want you to understand. We, I, am very, very grateful for American help, understanding machines, which is new to Soviet medicine. I have now evaluation of bone marrow transplant. Now appears only two cases will recover. There are four still alive out of 13. Please, it's hard for me. I must report in Vienna. Transplant is not a major factor in medical picture. I, I don't... There uh, were some doctor. argue that transplant decreased chances of survival. Dr. 
Professor Vass, illogical and unscientific. All of the transplant patients were so deeply affected that they were considered terminal, like Mashenko. They had no chance to survive without a transplant. All this was fully discussed. It is the collective opinion of experts in the field. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about collective opinions. What do you believe? Please, Dr. Gale. Do you believe it? Please. We are colleagues, you and I. I know how medicine is in the West. A bone marrow transplant is very close to you. It's your speciality, it's your life. I don't give a damn about bone marrow transplants per se. I'm not out to prove any one procedure. I just want to save lives. Let us both not say anything more. It's okay. Spasiba. This is Michelle. You have my duty. Please, I, I would like to talk with you. Just a little time. Of course. Let's let's find a little place to talk. Come. Dr. Gale, from Kiev, for a week, no one would tell me anything. It was like I was carrying disease. But here at Hospital 6, they are very kind. They sent me today to Institute for Children, Birth and Women's Medicine. I understand, yes. Mm -hmm. They said all pregnancy in Kiev was watched carefully now. The rules set up for abortion because of radiation danger. Was explained much danger for mental sickness from 8 week to 15 week. And that is me. Will be increase of 50% birth of backward retard children. They say it's up to me to choose. Work here at institute, she says, should be abortion. Kiev party secretary came to me. He said, my Valery was hero. His picture is in Pravda. But this, this is all I have left from Valery. He said you were a great special doctor from America. I want to ask you, please, is it too much risk? Is it true? Will more babies born with the birth defect? Without the accident, the chances of birth defect are one in 1,000. You see? Now they're saying that figure will be increased by 50% which means one and one half in a thousand. You see that? I think yes. Okay. But you also have to understand that we don't know. So your decision has to be based on your own courage to face the possibilities either way. I keep having this dream. Thank Chernobyl number four. It is like the old story of Baba Yaga. There, in the middle of marshland, is the witch house in the woods on chicken legs, turning and turning and swallowing the men and children and eating them. See, 
is clear to me now. Baba Yaga has got Valeri, my husband. I will not let her get my baby. Dr. Gale, I thank you. I thank you for helping us. Good luck to you. To your baby. Mikhail Arkhipovich, now I've got you, you stubborn old ram. You can't hide from me now. You've got to come with me. Leave him alone. Look, little grandma, I have my orders. Everybody goes, no one can live here. Hey, don't pretend you can hear me, old man. How are you going to go quietly? Or do I have to carry you? You'll have to carry him. He's dead. I want him. I told him it was dangerous. Radiation got him. Ridiculous, he was 81 years old. He'd already had two strokes, so he had another. He's just sitting there in his chair, looking over the fields, watching his plants grow.